A powerful way to study any aspect of the Savior's life is to do a side-by-side reading of what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John taught about a specific portion of his ministry. Carefully reading, looking for both similarities and differences, can highlight messages that we might have previously missed. While there's more to learn than we could cover in this short video, let's highlight a few unique aspects of the Savior's resurrection, beginning with Mark, which many scholars suggest was the first gospel to be written. In the Gospel of Mark, we learn that on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome came to the sepulcher at sunrise to anoint Christ's body with sweet spices. As they traveled to the tomb, they said to each other, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? However, they didn't need to worry, because when they arrived, they saw that the stone was already rolled away. This is a great life lesson. We often worry about things that the Lord will take care of. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. The man told them not to be afraid, and then proclaimed, Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. The man then gave the women at the tomb a specific invitation. Go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. Calling out Peter stands out to me. It's only in Mark that the heavenly messenger mentions his name specifically. The last time we heard about Peter in the Gospel of Mark was when he denied the Savior three times. Imagine you were reading this account for the first time. If we were, we might assume, well, it's too late for Peter. When things look bad, he denied the Savior. There's no coming back now. But with the specific inclusion of Peter by the young man at the tomb, we learn that it's not too late. In effect, Jesus is saying, Peter, you're still on my team. It wasn't over for Peter, and it's not over for us. Christ beckons us to join him, even when we stumble. In Matthew, an angel greets Mary Magdalene and another woman at the tomb and said, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come. See the place where the Lord lay. The angel also instructed them to go and tell Christ's disciples of his resurrection. The women departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. I love the phrase, unique to Matthew, they did run. What's the longest and fastest you have ever run? Could you have run longer and faster if you had this type of news to share? Can you imagine the feelings of those women on that resurrection morning? Can you feel their excitement, the adrenaline pumping through their bodies at this pivotal time in the world's history? Perhaps imagining the joy of this moment will motivate us to also be quick to open our mouths and share the gospel of Christ. In Luke, we again read of the faithful women who came to the tomb early on the first day of the week to anoint the body of the Savior. In Luke, this group includes Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women. The women were greeted by two angels who asked, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. The women remembered his words, returned, and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. While I lived in Jerusalem for a year, I frequently visited the place traditionally believed to be the location of Christ's burial and resurrection. When I visited this tomb for the last time before returning to the United States, I was feeling sad about leaving Jerusalem, a place I loved so much. I wondered how I could continue to deepen my connection with Christ as I had done for the past 12 months. While pondering this thought, the words from the angels, unique to Luke, came to my mind. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. I realized I didn't need to walk where Christ had walked in the past to be close to him. I just need to walk toward him now. And you and I can walk toward him today, no matter where we live. John's description of that first Easter morning provides the most insight into the experience of Mary Magdalene, who is mentioned by name in every gospel account as being at the tomb that morning. In John, Mary Magdalene is the first person to see the resurrected Jesus. When she does, she apparently tries to embrace the Savior, who said to her, Hold me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. 
But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Although the Savior's words to Mary may sound harsh, New Testament scholar Gail R. O'Day suggests a possible interpretation that resonates with me. Jesus' command, do not hold on to me, is the first post-resurrection teaching. When he speaks these words, Jesus teaches Mary that he cannot and will not be held and controlled. One cannot hold Jesus to preconceived standards and expectations of who he should be, because to do so is to interfere with Jesus' work and thereby limit what Jesus has to offer. Jesus' prohibition to Mary thus actually contains the good news of Easter. Do not hold on to me, but let me be free so that I can give you the fullness of what I have to offer. I love the idea that we cannot hold Jesus to preconceived standards and expectations. We will often have unmet expectations. We might hope to be healed, but remain sick. We might expect to have a loyal spouse, but instead live alone. We might assume our children will receive temple ordinances, but they choose not to do so. All of us will have times when we want to hold on to what we think Christ should do for us, but he has a different plan. We can let go of our preconceived expectations and instead trust in him. We've only touched upon a few of the powerful details that a careful side-by-side study of Christ's resurrection can illuminate. I encourage you to do your own in-depth study of Christ's resurrection. To help you with this endeavor, I've prepared some handouts that you can download for free. Just click the link in the description. Although there are small differences among the four gospel accounts, the core messages are the same. The tomb was empty, women were the first witnesses of the resurrection, and the good news of the Savior should be shared. I know that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and lives today. I witness that he loves each and every one of us. I know that is true. He lives.